Yes, sir, y'all. Welcome back, man. No more victories, man. Like, comment, subscribe, man. Tell me how y'all feel. We need that a million subscribers, bro. We this close to a million, man. We need it. Hey, this is part two of the uh, Bleacher Report mock draft, man. We're going to do pick 11. Let's start off with the 11, man. The Portland Trail Blazers. Um, T. Jane Saloon. I'm not really too familiar with the um, international prospects as of right now. So let's but let's look into it, man. Six eight two twelve. Okay, Obi Toppin. Sheesh. So that means he's bouncy. If he's not bouncy, that means he's not Obi Toppin. Okay, possibly he's hitting threes, and he's found his range lately with thirteen triple over the last thirteen threes over the last four games. That's nice. Athletic. Okay, six eight two twelve. Okay. Um. Yeah, I gotta do my homework on him. What's his name? T. J. Salon. Six eight two twelve. Ob Toppin. I don't. I don't really like the Ob Toppin comparison. Um. Just off the rip because this is the lottery right here, and I think if they when he when his draft uh when Ob Toppin's draft was up, I don't think he would have been a lottery pick if he would have redid it, reshuffled it, and did and did it now. So I don't really like the the ob topic comparison but that's on me to do my homework the real homework next we got ryan dunn from the uh from virginia going to the houston rockets six eight two sixteen plays like herbert jones Ooh, okay that means he's a defender ryan dunn's easy basket explosion okay but can he shoot man let's see if he can shoot 421 mark from three. Oh, that's very problematic I can't do nothing with him. But uh, with the Rockets, you have Cam Whitmore. I'm not understanding why you want this guy, 6'8", 216, Herbert Jones. And this guy, um, Ryan Dunn, they, he can't shoot. What can my small forward or possibly shooting guard, maybe even power forward, small ball power forward, what, can, what, what good use is he if he can't shoot? I really need shooters, man. In this NBA today, I need shooters, three and D guys. But he's four twenty one. That needs he needs that needs to be handled now. He he needs to be sh getting shots up, man. So I, I'm not I'm man I'm not hey still early in the season about fifteen seventeen games to the college season, man. So we who who knows thirteen Donovan Klingen from UConn. Yeah, good. Seven. Oh, we seven two? Seven two two eighty. Nice. Nice. Um Jacob Portal comparison. That's tough. I know Jacob Portal he he's got paid. I know he's almost or if he's not there, close to a hundred million dollar in contracts. Um But I mean they're I, if, if he needs to be able to shoot because I know they're gonna tell me he's a shot blocker. If you're seven two, you have you better be blocking shots, bro. You have to be. Uh, let's see. After struggling offensively, I don't. Why do you got offensive struggles, sophomore? You supposed to have them freshman year. Um, two eighty, big big dude. Um, rim protection. I mean, they're basically saying nothing stands out about this guy. That's what they're saying. It sounds like. Um. So I don't. I'm. I'm not really liking this right here in the lottery. Like I said, in the lottery, lottery picks. I need them to be um franchise changers, or be with me for a long time. So hopefully, maybe a Walker Kessler or something. Maybe, but he also needs to work on his threes. They don't say nothing about his shooting. It's all about his defense. So. Um, I don't know if the NBA still needs big bruisers drafted in the first in the lottery pick. You could get that later on. There's plenty of bruisers out there that you know could be drafted later on. Next to close out the lottery, we got um Terrence Shannon Jr. from Illinois getting drafted to the OKC. Adding to the OKC, they need that wing. I think. Ooh, I just got some. I do like him right here as a Josh Giddy replacement. I like him as a Josh because he this guy right here gets downhill. He can run with SGA and them boys. He can run. Kelly Oubre Jr. Uh, I don't really see it. I think just because he's left-handed, 
and he's six. What did it say? Six six two fifteen. I don't really see Kelly Oubre Jr. in him. Um, hey, I don't really have one for him right now. Off the top of my head. Let's see, but he's shooting forty one and a half percent on six and a half three point attempts a game. Dang, man. Come on. That's six and a half threes a game. That's hey, I like it. I like it so far. Yes, his open floor speed, what I just said, yes, he he's he he slashes he when the with with or without the ball in his hand, he gets down court fast. I like that. Hot streaks from before, okay. I like that. Hey, yeah, I like I like him on the um I like him with SGA, Chet, Jalen Williams. He fits in. I like that right there. Cause they do need a shooting guard who could come in and knock down some threes, man. Six and a half threes a game. I like that. I, I don't know what his I mean his coach his college coach obviously likes that in this NBA. I think six and a half threes a game for a shooter is good. I like I like that right there to close out the uh the lottery. I think he might be a little he might go a little bit higher, maybe in that twelve, twelve to fourteen range. I like him right there so far up to this point in the season. I like that. So now we're out the lottery. Ooh, let's put Reed Shepard in there. Okay, from Kentucky. Who would have thought he would have been a one and done? He's been a great glue guy for Kentucky, man. No lie. He's been a great glue guy. You can see um when they got Wagner when he's a little, you know, out the loop, playing a little too fast or something. Uh Reed Shepard, he he could come he comes in and brings the whole team together. No lie. Um especially with players like Rob Dillingham, find him, he's open. They got a shooter on their team, Reeves, find him, he's open. This guy, Reese Shepard, he knocks down his own threes as well. But I don't I don't see him being a first round pick cuz he's what they call like a like a game manager. I could see him, I could see that. I could see that. But I think what would really get him get him high is if he, if he really locks down on defense, get like some TJ McConnell in him on defense. 6'3", oh, he's 6'3", 6'3", 187, Dante DiVincenzo, ooh, I don't see Dante DiVincenzo because DiVincenzo is so, so much more explosive um, with the ball in his hands, and also he, uh, DiVincenzo is not a point guard, this guy right here, he seems like he's strictly point guard, like a backup, he's a, he'll be a great backup point guard when his time comes, so let's see what they're saying about him. He does have physical and creation limitations. Wow. He can shoot. Uh, passing IQ. He does have good IQ passing. No lie. Uh, pick and roll. I can't see him being the, the primary ball handler in the pick and roll. Because he's not, you know, NBA, that's for the superstars to get that pick and roll and all that. But I can see him being a, a solid backup point guard, man, for a long time in the NBA. Um, what is he's rocking a 5.9 steal percentage and 4.0 block percentage? Okay, so I, mean, I don't know what that means. Steal percentage and 4.5 percent. So if he jumps, he's gonna block it. Four percent of the time, steals at five percent. I don't know what that means. Doesn't get to the rim or free throw line. Okay, but yeah, no, yeah, no self creation. I I see that, but he can get other people involved. Next we have Kyle Flipowski from Duke. To the Knicks, seven foot sophomore, two hundred and fifty pounds. Um, this guy he could be a good backup player in the league, but I think was he's not playing enough. I don't know. I just can't see. I can't see it in him right now. I cannot see it in him because his versus scoring versatility remains attractive, but it's the transition ball handling passing. I don't see. I haven't seen too much in transition ball handling. What they're talking about, passing and defensive foot speed. I don't know what that means. Uh, I I know. I just can't. I don't. I don't see the same thing they're seeing because he does have decent passing. I don't know about transition ball. Like he's not dribbling. Is he running? I haven't seen him run the break, and I don't think that would be asked of him at all in the NBA to run the break at all. They don't have a comparison for him, but I remember seeing. Like Keith, no, that wasn't him. I don't know who they got him compared to. Of course, yeah. While well, it's worth questioning whether he'll blow by, blow by. I don't. Why would a seven footer blow by? I don't see him 
posting up one step, blown by a power forward or center in the NBA currently. So I don't know what they mean by next level speed and initiating fast breaks. I don't see that. Uh, but I could see him being a, just a backup, a backup center, power forward, seven feet. Mm, not really. I don't really see too much defensive, too defensive um, blocking shots from him. But um, yeah, he needs he needs to work on, and he does have a jumper. He can't shoot. I think he needs to shoot more. I think he needs to shoot more to show the NBA he could really shoot it. I think that will really help him get his chances all the way up there. Is helping. We'll get more shots up. Kevin Mc... Next. Ooh. Kevin McCooler Jr. This guy to the Heat? Whoo. That would be the perfect Heat player, bro. You see what they're doing with Jaime Hotkes, bro. He would be the perfect player for them. I really like him right here. I don't, he's probably what, 17 because of his age. I think he's a fifth-year senior. But if you've been watching Kansas this season, I mean, he's really... Their best player. He's been their, he's been their best player the past two seasons. So, and he's small shooting guard, small four. I could he's I to me he's more of the point guard shooting guard. Even he's six seven two fourteen. He's more of the point guard shooting guard to me. Um, comparison Alex Caruso. Sheesh. Um, maybe Caruso with a better jumper and more a better playmaking because Caruso. Ooh, maybe Reeves. Maybe a little Austin Reeves. Maybe Austin Reeves, but he's he's a strong guard, um, makes threes. He can shoot. He gets people involved, and he plays defense, man. And he's a, a mature, uh, older, mature guy. Taking more threes, free throws, and averaging a career best, 4.9 assists. Nice. 4.9 assists. Yes, you need – yes, more threes, more free throws, and averaging a career best. Come on. that's that's Come on. That's what you need. Okay, this is what I, this is what I really wanted to see, y'all. Um, he's taking full advantage of a major of a major usage usage spike, which is up to twenty seven and a half percent from nineteen and a half percent. This is big right here because it looks like he has the ball in his hand a lot, but it's obviously only twenty seven percent. And he's very effective when he does have the ball in his hand. He moves without the ball, and he'll crash the glass too. He the ball the ball finds him. Energy finds this guy right here. Um, Kevin, Kevin McCullough. So I like the Miami Heat fit, but I don't know if he'll stay right here. I think he can move up a spot or two, man. He, he's because I don't think I don't, when it comes to workouts, I think he'll be great in workouts too, man. Because he's been shooting damn near NBA threes as well, thirty eight percent from three, and it's still and an added playmaking feel is still key for his role and uh, NBA potential. Yeah, I like that. Good fit. Cleveland Cavaliers, DJ Wagner. Um, I'm just going to say off the rip, I don't really like this fit. Unless, I mean, because I'm assuming they're keeping Garland. Maybe they move um, Donovan Mitchell. But uh, maybe, because I don't, I don't see him being a starting shooting guard in the uh, NBA. Right. Oh, Colin Sexton? I think Colin Sexton was just more of a dog in uh, high school and college compared to DJ Wagner, you know, and you know, these all Americans, their, their previous success follows them and has them in the mock drafts and everything. So that's a big part of all these kids as well. If they're all Americans in high school, that's going to follow them to the mock drafts, of course, but it's up to people like me and these NBA teams to do the job and find out who's going to really impact the, the organization. Day one, I'm talking about day one, man. First round draft pick, top 20 picks, you need to be impactful day one. So what they're saying is he's delivered more perimeter shot making and playmaking flashes as of late. I think I think he needs I think what's gonna keep him in the league is 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 defense, bro. I can see him being a more of a Patrick Beverly. Let me know what y'all think. If I I, could, I know everybody wants to score the ball and everything, but I could see him being a DJ, I mean a Patrick Beverly. DJ Wagner being a Patrick Beverly, bro. And that's no disrespect or anything, man. Because if y'all remember this kid, right, DJ Wagner, he was a coming out of high school. He was number one overall pick in high school, and he was going to be the number one. He was number one overall pick as well in the mock drafts coming out. So to see him going to eighteen, I mean, it's the game is the game, man. 
Scout, look at hey, look at this right here, y'all. My my point guards, they all need to have this right here. Scouts will they've been looking at my damn videos, dog. I know it. I know it, man. Give me a call, dog. We can do this together. Scouts still have questions about his fishing tools and floater game. Y'all know me with that floater game. My guards gotta have it. They got to have it. The big man killers, man. Yeah. And he, I don't think he shoots too good either. I don't know why they have percentages in here for him. He doesn't shoot the three, the three too good as well. Uh, number 19, Yves Missy from Baylor. I've been watching Baylor. I, don't, I haven't seen too much of him. Center, freshman, 7 feet, 235. Comparison is Mark Williams that played at Duke, but is now for the um, Charlotte um, Hornets. With a double-double and five blocks. Okay, so he's a shot blocker for sure. And he gave Flipkowski, made it difficult for Flipkowski, who was predicted to go earlier in the draft. This this seems more like a Clint Capella type of dude. Lob threat and plays defense. Um, He was previously number 35, and they have him up at 19. Um, There's that other kid as well that's from... The kid that played at North Carolina a while back, um, man, I don't have his name right now. Let me look it up real quick on my phone. Sorry, y'all. Let me look up his name real quick. Uh, that was his name, uh, Payne. I forgot his last, his first name. I think it was Payne. I don't. It's my fault, y'all. But if you if you're just a live target and you're holding down the paint, I know that's. A necessary skill you know all these teams pelicans yeah they probably want to help try to guard joker and, and beat and those guys but I, he seems just from reading this he seems more like a, a clink capella clink capella type of guy i haven't watched too many hornets so i don't really know what mark williams is doing but uh i think you could get this guy later in the draft i don't think he's a 19 worthy right now let's go to the next one number 20 khalil Ware. From Indiana. Sophomore. I remember he went to Oregon. All-American, of course. 7 feet, 242. Remind, pro, pro comparison is Jared Allen. Um, his impact comes and goes, which is why he won't be the consensus lottery pick that his size suggests. So, I mean, they're obviously saying already his motor and impact isn't there. But they, they're looking for an NBA team to beat to get it to get it out of them be the player that you can be be the all-american you were in high school but i don't really like this pick either at the 20 for the knicks i mean i guess they're trying they're about to get rid of mitch uh mitchell robinson um i mean of course guys are they see these scouts see seven feet 240 they throw them in the uh the mock drafts but i mean it's all about production Look at let's go off production of what they're doing, not what they could do all the time, you know. Um, he's averaging fifteen and a half and nine and a half rebounds, with a strong showing against UConn's Donovan Clinton. Yeah, I seen um shot man. Same thing I'm gonna say with the, with shot block with seven footers. You have to be shot. Block. I don't even know why they keep throwing you in there. You have to be a shot blocker if you're seven feet. I don't want if if seven feet and it doesn't say shot blocker. Rim protection, what is the point of you being seven feet? So that's another thing with, with this guy right here. I mean, they say shot blocking. Yes, you need to have that with excellent finishing. Does he finish around the rim? To post and out. Inconsistency should be our big red flag. I mean, if you're inconsistent in a 30 game season, what are you going to be? What are you going to do in an 80 game season? And we're traveling almost every couple of times a week, you know? So I don't know what they. I think there's a. There's, I don't. Like I said, this is early in the season, but I just want to mark this down now to see how the draft actually goes coming in June because I just want to bookmark this stuff and see, you know, how players grow. Uh. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't. I don't really. They just throwing at these last one, two. They got a couple of big men in there. Big men. Big men. It's the year of the big man, I guess they're trying to say. But 
everybody's looking for that next Joker, Embiid, you know, AD, you know. So that's going to be fun to see, man. That's going to be fun to see. Let me know what y'all think, man, about these picks. Who, who y'all got? Who y'all got, man? Part three coming right up, man. Let's get it, y'all. Subscribe. We need a million.